I enjoy it very much. Like I said, I came as, as a football player and I still enjoy it very much, except that now I don't have, I don't have the, 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 the physical abilities to, to sustain the, the, the effort. Okay? Um, competition of push ends. I enjoy the, the competition and I encourage young people who are interested to go into it. Uh, I don't think anything by itself is bad. It's up to you how do you look at it. If you go into competition of pushing ends to win, and that's what you should do. You don't go into competition to lose. If not, you're cheating yourself. But if it becomes a goal, the goal of your life, it becomes an instrument for you just to show off to everybody you are the best in the world or the best of whatever world you, you imagine. Then again, you're making, you're cheating yourself because you limit yourself in your capacity to innovate, in your capacity to be creative and to share with people who are going to follow you a technique, a sophisticated technique. And everybody knows that. When you are into pushing hands, the, the techniques are very limited. You cannot make the difference between Chen style, Yang style, Wu style, whatever, because you have to be efficient. There are a certain number of rules. So you have to accept the limitation of competition. And you have to look competition as a, a, a starting point for something else. And I'm very happy to have been through competition. I've been very happy to have trained uh, students to get into competition because from that I started to uh, uh, to develop an awareness of my fears, uh, I was in better control, uh, I've learned from other people because competition is not only competition you know, in the circle or in the square, it's also an opportunity to meet people in a corridor and that's often something I can see all over the world, either Taiwan, China and so on. Uh, but you always have to remember, it's uh, just a stage, it's not the end and I think mm, most of competitors do agree on that. But I understand it could be an end for a short period of time. If you are a professional or you want to become a professional, you go to competition to market yourself. This I understand because you have to make a living. So competition is a good instrument. Uh, if you don't make a living of Tai Chi, okay, you can go to competition just for your own image or to testing your ability and so on. But you should not view the world of pushing end through competition. And that's where competitive pushing ends could be as detrimental to your progression as pushing, pushing ends competition as a goal. Because if you're always into competitive pushing ends, you don't listen to others, you just listen to your power. And so, for example, I'm a big guy, you know, like one of my students said as a joke, if I want to remain the best of the, of the world, I go to, to a school, kindergarten, and, and when kids are coming out, I push in with them, I'll be the best. Forever, okay? Okay, so first we have to be very precise in the notion of exercise because some people might think you're just talking about the exercise to uh, train for free pushing hands. Uh, I guess your idea is the whole thing could be understood as an exercise. I understand some, for some people, pushing hands is an exercise and, and I understand it very easily because if we see in terms of Tai Chi Chuan, it's a martial art. So pushing end is just an intermediary exercise between the form and the real fighting. But let's say that it could be free pushing end as well as uh, exercise. Uh, I think I started to, to answer to this question uh, when you asked me the first question. Basically, and of course I have changed, and it depends on, on your maturity. Uh, I think for me, the most interesting thing is to understand who you are, not through just a self-reflection, but through practice with someone else. Because what I insist in pushing it, you have, to, and, and it, I didn't invent that. It, it's in a, a, uh, it has been uh, proposed by the Chinese. You have to make one with your opponent or your partner. No, partner can be opponent, opponent can be partner. Uh, you have to make one with someone else and you have to accept that this person decides how you're gonna neutralize him or her. And this concept at first sounds very strange for most of the people because usually when you're fighting 
whatever martial arts or you're playing football, you know, I rely on my capacity to win and you rely on your capacity to win. But here it's a different uh, attitude. You know, I have to wait for you to propose me something into the way you push so I can adapt and find a solution to the problem you ask me. So here's a very interesting thing. You have to be yourself, different, but you have also to make one with, with the other one. And for me, it's, it's something very interesting because it's part of my study of anthropology of uh, religion. We call that uh, uh, coincidence of the opposite. So we are opposed, but at the same time, we have a level of coincidence. And I like this word of the Chinese, Chinese philosophy, a resonance. Okay, so this is for me the fascinating aspect of, of pushing in because you don't have to hurt people, you don't hit, you don't you know uh, punch or whatever. So it's quite a safe exercise. But at the same time, your personality is threatened, is put into danger, and beyond this, you have to work together to improve yourself, and you are also into a notion of sharing with with others. And for me, that's something I will never have thought of something like that by keeping on playing football. There are generous ideas in, in, in football, it depends on where you've been trained. But this attitude is very, very far from basic uh, Western sports. And for me, this is the most important.